hello. You can turn that down. All right, I'm back. It's been like uh, a, a week, more? It's been more than a week, it's been like two. <laughs> I don't know. Time has been passing, I gotta say. But I'm back with another theme day. As you can see on the title card, we're going to be doing water level music. So this should be, this should be interesting. Um, so far in the suggestions, the ones I've pulled up, there's a Super Mario Odyssey one, one from Spyro, one from Sonic CD, and one from Breath of the Wild. So this is gonna be a wide range of interpretations of what does water sound like? What does struggling in water sound like? My voice is a little fucked up. Uh, that, that's because I've been recording a metal track and just finished it yesterday. So my, uh, my, my voice is a little, uh, <laughs> still recovering, a little cracky. Said metal track is now up for patrons. You can go to, you can type case.dog slash join. Anyway, yesterday was my birthday. Happy late birthday. Welcome, Cosmo Comic. Also, welcome, to Salvador and Punkin Mars. And I guess your name is Markiplier now. <laughs> God. warmed up. Let's not waste too much time. Ah, oh, more piano vamp. I don't need that. I don't need that. All right. Here's what we're doing. Going live. My camera. Oh, man. There we go. Welcome. It's a Tuesday. It is May 2nd. 5-2. That is a... 5 against 2 would be, uh, let's see. That's just a major third. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Where is there an A? Yeah, that got rid of it. I'm gonna start doing that now. <laughs> Trying to see what uh, harmonic interval the date creates. Play a chord. I just did! That's today's chord. Simple. The harmonic series and whatnot. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
We're good. We're good. Everything's set up. How is... Let me just see real quick. Uh, accidentally used it. That's fine. That's valid. Uh, where is my live shit? There we go. Okay, I like to have both chats up on one of my screens. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Better. All I need is this. I just need that chat. Okay, cool. Cool. Awesome. Amazing. Then we got Twitch here. Yep. So, first suggestion. Let's do this one first. It's Mario Odyssey. This was suggested by Mars in the chat. This is Lake Lamode 1 from Super... Wow. This is Lake Lamode 1 from Super Mario Odyssey. I have not played Super Mario Odyssey. I have been out of the loop of Nintendo games for probably like <laughs> seven years now. Um, but I know Mario has a lot of motifs and beyond motifs, Mario has a lot of... Uh, thematic elements and music and specific kind of music styles that it plays with. So let's see if this follows any of those conventions. I'm going to listen once all the way through for initial reactions and vibes and then again for analysis. Let's go. Okay, already we have this very floaty harp kind of thing. very wondrous, very dreamlike, you know? It's all very high bell sounds and stuff, which is, you know, when you think of water, when you think of being underwater, everything's very muffled, you know? So it's like, More going with the, like, feel, like the, uh, compositional feel of floatiness in water, rather than trying to, like, evoke it texturally, you know? Yeah, those chord changes sound very Mario. So now the harp is going downward over the chords. And then glissando's up a few times. Almost gives it, giving the impression of like bubbles escaping from something, the way that like the glissandos work. All these like high, I think those are piano notes. And when it ends on just those like, da, 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 those notes, it almost evokes like a, like a submarine radar beep, you know? Yeah, then it goes into this B section. It's very calming. It's like a lullaby, pretty much. and fades. Alright, so this is a pretty sparsely composed track. It sounds like it's mostly just doing arpeggios up and down some chords 
with that little extra, um, that little upper like bell piano rhythm on it, right? So let's let's see what's happening here chord wise. So we start with a C, but it sounds like it's a four of the chord that they start with. Yeah, I think so. Because it runs up this from C to F and then back to C, you hear that? So it sounds like it's... Sounds like we're sort of spelling out F. But here, when it does hit that F, there's a different voice doing a fifth of that. Or doing, no, yeah. There's a different voice doing a fourth of that too. So it runs up fourths in the intro, that's cool. And we do get this like, like minor seventh something like interval that I hear in there too. Yeah, and then we start going up and down like an F7, an F major 7. So I'm hearing something like that. And I hear it move to like a B flat, just from changing those. It does something like that. But it sounds like the central chord motion that we're starting with is this F7 to its fifth. No. Yeah, we're starting on this F7 and then going to its fourth and doing like a sus2 sort of thing. And then we go up to, okay. Ah, oh, qu Queen's what? Gave $500. Ah, thank you. Level time we are in Diane. Oh my God. Hat. A fish hat above all. Nothing else will do. Deprive Egg. me of my food and water, but never fish hat. Listen, we need 25 more dollars if anybody else wants to donate and push that over. Don't ask Queen Snarf to do it all, but thank you so much, Queen Snarf. For pushing us nearly over the next new hat goal, I will put on the fish hat. I feel like that is appropriate. We can do it. I believe in this chat. Thank you so much. Holy shit. Ah. Waking me up. Welcome, Queen Snarf. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Alright, where were we? Let's see if we can get to Fish Hat before I'm done analyzing the song. Let's go. Let's go! <laughs> I- okay. Okay, I'm lost. Thank you so much, Queens. I I, ca I cannot thank you enough. I need to just I need to just say that. 
again a few times. Thank you. Oh my god. Dono bombed. Jesus. All right. So. Sounds like what we're doing is moving between F. Queen Snuff gave Queen Snuff gave twenty five dollars. Man, they beat you to it. Thank you Don't so much. Worry, I got you all covered. I just Holy shit. the Dono gold. Please excuse me while I pound my fists on the table. Holy fish fuck. Hat, fish hat, fish hat. We're doing it again. All right, here we go. <laughs> Holy fuck. Ah. You know, I, I'm glad this happened during the first song. Hang on. <laughs> Welcome, Queen Snarf. Oh my god. Do I have the... Can I just... Yeah, there it is. Let me reset the dono bar. All right, let me reset... Holy fuck. All right, it's time. I'm just gonna... Okay, I need to... Hang on, I gotta figure this out. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's fish hat time. We are under the sea today, motherfuckers. Believe me, this is not... Okay. <sighs> Fuck. Okay. I think we're... Yeah. All right. All right, I have to do that, otherwise it just, like, this hat is so loose on my head, it's like, I, it comes off with the headphones otherwise. Okay. We have the fish hat. It's fish hat time. Water level time. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's just start. Let's start this from the top. The, let's start this from the top again. Okay. All right. So, we are pet we are arpeggiating up and down. This F major 7, it says there's a D. There we go. Yeah. This F major 7 and this And this, uh, it says F sus 4, but I, I hear it as a B sus 2, right? There's just because of the way that fourths and fifths work. Iggy Birdie, thank you for the follow. Okay, I think the chords are mostly doing the same thing, where we go. Essentially, we're doing that. Like that, right? Welcome, Iggy Bird. in both places at once, it looks like. Damn. <laughs> okay. So the melody here... runs up just that F major kind of sound, right? 
Queen Starf has gifted a tier one sub to Iggy Birdie. Hell yeah. So, so far we're just doing chord arpeggios and scale runs, right? It sounds like we're in, I haven't, I don't think we've hit it. Yeah, the only black key we're hitting is B flat. So that's where we're at so far. It's a very floaty chord progression. It's a 1-4, essentially. And the melody is just serving that. It does this major seven jump. Which is like a very kind of whimsical thing to do in a melody. It just, and it, uh, I, like, big jumps in melodies like that, especially for something like, like, a, like an underwater level song, it sort of gives, like I said before, almost like a, like a submarine blip kind of effect, right? Um, it has, uh, it has like a, just a, it sounds like something mysterious off in the distance. And occasionally it goes up to C which is the five, right? Yeah. And it, very simple chord progression. One and four feels really floaty, and then going up to four to five is very similar when we're doing like that minor key stuff from to like going doing the the six seven one kind of thing right the how how would i do that here that would be uh like this is our six right and we hear that a lot in songs where there's like a floaty kind of and then it goes like, and, and resolves that way. This is our one, right? So when we do that, like, deceptive cadence would bring us into six, which is essentially what that six, seven, one shit is. But this also just as well wants to resolve to major, right? So they, they do that. They give us this floatiness and then bring us back. So it's a very simple, whimsical thing with a resolution right at the end, basically. And that's just the A section. And it does the melody again. Yeah, and then there, okay, so there is this tail here. And, uh, what is that? That's not four. That's three?
I think, wait, what the hell is it doing there? Yeah. Yeah, so now it's doing like a three into four. Sort of. But what it almost sounded like is that it didn't move from the... It sounded like it didn't move from that when it did that, right? It sounded like it just put that in the bass. Because when this steps up... That just makes that other chord, that's just the root of the next chord. So that may not have even been... That may not have even been that chord. It may have just been a, like a bass motion doing that. But even so, like even if all the arpeggios and stuff change the same, this is a third of this, which means that when you have a seven chord, the top half of that seven chord is the chord for the third, right? Because you build chords with odd, uh, you build chords with the odds, right? Like you start with your root is one, and then you have the third, and then you have the fifth, and then you have the seventh and ninth, etc. Um, so by that logic, if you go up a third and you're trying to keep to the same scale, what you need to do to build chords are always going to fall within the like chord palette of the root chord, right? If that makes sense. So what I'm trying to say is even if it does only move the bass down to there as it stays in the, you know, this F thing up here. That's still essentially just playing this chord. Like, they're all part of the same chord. Except not really, because if this would be like a sixth, that wouldn't really be in the, that would be kind of in the way. But, harmonically, it's compatible, you know? Redeem Hydrate Me. You can hear my voice cracking, I know. I've been recording metal all, all weekend, it's, uh, so my voice is still recovering. I'm doing metal screams and shit. This is, uh, this is much more calming, I will say. Okay, yeah. So this B section has like a chord progression and then it just starts going off. All right, now here. We move our root to, like, the, the one beat then moves to this four chord, right? So where's it go from there? B? Ah, okay. I hear some of that happening. It's not happening all the time, but I can hear the chords switching. Like, it doesn't always do... It, it sounds like it's not always doing the root note, but I can definitely hear the chords switching in some sort of pattern like this. So we start on this four, this B flat, and then we go down to the third, which is this A minor, 
and I hear like D as a passing tone and then this descent, basically a two, five, one kind of rolling descent, right? What kind of hot tea are you drinking? This is, uh, it's, it's constant comet green tea. It's like orange spice green tea. It's great. I love me that spice, the fumes of this very, very oversteeped lukewarm tea. Okay, so we have... Okay, and it does that once. So this descent that it's doing... Other than this first one where it's like, this is the five, or blah, blah, blah. this is the four, then this is the three. Other than that first like half step down descent, what it does here is this jumps up a fourth, right? From three to six. And then jumps down to two. And then up a fourth again to the, uh, what is that? This is the, uh, se no. Yeah, this is the fifth. So we jump up to the fifth of the chord, which we'll want to resolve down to one, right? This is, this is music theory shit. This is actually jumping down the circle of fifths. If I start on F and I just play, if I just stack perfect fifth power chords, right? Like that, we have F5. I believe, yeah. This is an F sus2. Then we add a 6 to that. And then... Wait, that would be... This right, yeah, that's a perfect 5th, that's a perfect 5th, and then what's a perfect 5th here? Yeah, that, okay. So, at the top here, we have this A. So if we were to move down from this A and try to land on F, just moving down the circle of fifths. Right? We'd start on A, then go to D, then go to G, then go to E. I'm sorry, then go to C, then go to F. And that would just be rolling down perfect fifths. So let's say we don't want to roll our roots down that many octaves because that's spread pretty far. Fortunately, notes are doubled in all octaves, so we can just access those within the same octave. So when we slide down to this C, I'm sorry, when we slide down to this three, do that four, three thing. This is now the A that was up here at that circle of fifths. And essentially what we're go doing now is going down the circle of fifths. So an A would go down to a D. A D would go down to the G. The G would go down to the C. And then the C would go down to the F. And so we're just kind of, by doing that kind of rocking up and down, grabbing a note, going lower, grabbing a note, going lower, it's actually walking down the circle of fifths to get there. So that's, uh, that's... I love that kind of when, when the circle of fifths and like things like that come up in music theory because it's, it's such like a, this comes from like a theory, like there's a shape of like musical harmonic relations that this comes from and they're just like using it and interpreting it, right? And it, it definitely, like the circle of fifths is a very, it's very floaty and very like wandering if you just kind of move around it as like steps up and down. So I, I, I think that's cool. But that's only one, that's only like one half of this B section, right? Because after it ends on F, where does it go? And then it does something interesting. 
it actually plays a B natural. And it sounds like it's doing like a... It sounds like it's doing like a G major. Like a G major seven with a... with a B in the bass. But we do hit a note with like a natural. So I think what we're doing... Uh, Cause we have this F. Now we're going to like stepping up, basically stepping up a whole step and making it major. But I don't know if that's actually what it's trying to do. Cause it doesn't sound like it's doing a, it doesn't sound like it's doing a B major. It sounds like that B natural is just part of a chord. Because you definitely hear the bass go to it. But it, it sounds like it's doing it as part of a G chord. So we walk up. And then... Ah, so it... Is it doing another circle of fifths thing? Yeah, and then we skip past that B natural, go back into our normal F key, and hit that three again. Then chromatically step down to the, that would be the minor third. And then I think, yeah, another major like second interval. Ah! Then we hit a major sixth. Or rather, we hit the sixth, yeah, we hit the sixth of the, the scale and play a major chord over it, rather than the minor chord it would normally be. So that just, it's like a, it's like a coming to the surface, right? Coming for a breath of fresh air. Yeah, and then we go to the four of this chord. So D major is now where we're at. And then we go to the G. And you hear like a little add nine onto that chord when it moves back to it. And then it, what is that chord it jumps to? What the hell is that? Is that just C? Why am I so lost? Is that a G minor now? Yeah, it sounds like we hit a G minor 7. So this was D major. And then G. And then D. And then G minor. It's something like that. And then we hit a C. Ah, I see. I see. So.
So we have this G minor now. And then it moves to C, I think. Which is another 5-1 motion. And then it is another 5-1 motion to go back to F. So it gracefully floats harmonically from that modulated, like coming up for air kind of interval. Back to the root. That's actually really cool. Then it comes back through and does the melody. Yeah, and then it loops. And that's basically both sections. So this is cool. It's very floaty, right? Uh, that 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 is definitely the the angle of water that they're going with for this composition, right? Is to to sound floaty. The har arpeggios are way wider than this, but this is the effect you're getting, right? I love that. And the way that it modally changes that G, it turns that G from minor to major, right? So that it can use it to put us into D major, which that's cool. And then it changes that G major back to G minor in order to 2 5 1 us back into F. That's cool as hell. So, like, this is very, it's very uh, creative with the imagery that it's trying to, trying to produce, right? Um, and it uses some simple tenets of music theory that sound very pleasant, but also very um, incongruent, very like incongruent, I guess, to create that sensation of like being wistfully floating. Um, I, I like the, I, I just really like how it's that G that they make, that they use to like kind of switch modally to indicate that there's like a, a modulation going on. That's cool. I like this. I'm gonna give this one a four out of five if I had to rate it. It's my first rating for today. And uh, we're starting out with a four. I give a lot of fours, but I gotta say, this one's cool. It's short and sweet, but it's interesting. And it's, uh, it's, it's given us the vibe right off the bat, I gotta say. So that, was Lake Lamode by Sup Wow by Super Mario what the fuck am I? Okay. <laughs> this is a Lake Lamode one from Super Mario Odyssey. Suggested by Mars in the chat. Thank you for that. It's a good start to our water level theme day. Super Mario himself. Yeah like the fucking credits of uh the Super Mario movie were like the DK rap <laughs> by Donkey Kong. Like <laughs> he did it they didn't credit Grant Kirkhope. Do the Mario. Yeah, 100%. I don't who did do the Mario. We know about that, right? That was part of like the uh the 80s cartoon, wasn't it? I don't know. Or was it not? Where did do the Mario come from? I'm not familiar with my Mario memes. There's a lot of cursed Mario media out there. You ever heard of Fume? I got one of these. It's so dumb, but, um, like, it, 
does what it says on the tin. It's like a not vape, right? <laughs> it's just like a thing where you breathe air through a tube. And then there's like a little like foam tube in it that has like scented air. And you just breathe fucking like mint flavor air. It's like a fidget toy for smokers and vapors. And it's 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 got this when you adjust the valve, it's 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 just it's so weird. It's the most useless fucking thing. Um but uh, I gotta say, I do dig it. I do dig just having like a like a mint blast every now and then without having... It's like all the joy of uh, like those old... Anybody remember those Listerine pocket packs? Do they still make those? It's like that. I just have mint air. It's great. This is not a this is not a sponsorship. I just got one of these, and I'm I'm having fun with it. Had anything else to add before we all went out for the night? It was like, the Mario movie was actually pretty good. Oh my god. Yeah, mint. Hell yeah. Are the icebreakers liquid ice things? And it's not even mint. There's like different flavors. I brought them. Because I might change one out. And get my live fucking review of these things. Between songs here. There's crisp mint. That's the one I got. And then uh, maple pepper and white cranberry. So I'm left with the... Uh, the black and white opposites here. See, maple pepper sounds interesting to me. I feel like inhaling, like, peppercorn, because that, that's what this looks like, is peppercorns, right? Um, I feel like that might be, like, harsh. Uh, and I don't really know about the cranberry. I fucking hate cranberry, personally. But maybe, I don't know what the difference between cranberry and white cranberry is, so I don't know. Should I try one? Should I change one out? I kind of want to try the maple pepper one. I'm going to do it. Quick fume break before next track. I'm going to put this core back in. And then probably, is there like oil in here? Wipe it out. Fume break. Yeah. It's spelled, it's spelled F-U-M with an umlaut, with an umlaut above the U. It's like blue raspberry. It doesn't exist. Okay, white cranberry, it's just not a real thing. Cranberry, like, Wisconsin is where all the fucking cranberries grow, apparently. Um, I guess they're, like, native to, to here. Um. Oh. That smells so odd. Oh, it's actually, like, it looks peppery. The other one was white. This one's, oh, man. Jesus. That's strong. What's that gonna taste like? <laughs> what the hell? I, I have no way to describe this. It's not a vape. This is literally scented air. Okay? It's like... The wick of a Glade plug-in with, like, flavor oil in it. <laughs> it's not even- there's no vapor. There's nothing that enters your lungs. It just, like, is- is- is taste air. I don't- White cranberries are just cranberries that are early in their harvest season. Would that make them, like, more bitter? Isn't that, like, worse? Taste air, yeah. These are, like, $90. I wouldn't recommend this unless you have, like, a fucking, uh, like, some kind of other inhaling habit. But it's, uh, it, it, this is absolutely, like the ad said, this is a fidget toy for smokers. I like this better than the mint. <laughs> it's just so weird. I feel, I feel like if I keep inhaling it, it's gonna, like, make me sneeze, you know? Anyway. That's my non-vape. That's my air break, okay? That's appropriate for the, uh, the water level theme. I'm coming up for air, right? 
uh, flavored air water bottle product thing. Um, yeah, I've seen, God, I've seen so many different applications of like scented air and like flavored air kind of shit. I've seen like premium oxygen, like, uh, like pressurized things that you can get. I've seen like, yeah, the, the, the ones where you have like just water, but you put like a scent thing in it. So it like hits your nose and it makes you think you're drinking something else because of how taste works, I guess. Um, wow, gonna go to the DMV with one of these for my air brake endorsement test. God. See, I think this makes more sense because for one, um, you're not like buying a contained thing, right? Like, this is its own device. Like, I can just have this unless it gets, like, fucking run over or something. It's it's pretty hardy. It's like, like, it's not gonna... This could do some damage if you hit somebody with it. It's kind of heavy. And also, like, I imagine you could just third party, you could probably just buy, like, a, a Glade Wick, like, this size. Like, without, like, just buy the raw material, right? And then just get, like, essential oils or whatever that are, like, food safe. And then just soak one and make your own, I imagine. There's probably, like, a third-party market for these things. Unless they have patented the fucking scent cores. In which, to which, in which case I would be like, okay, that's just kind of stupid. I'll, I'll just go back to vaping. Vanilla, just fucking soak one in vanilla extract. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, that would be god-awful. All right, let's move on to the next thing. All right, so Cosmo Comic in the chat suggested Aquaria Towers from Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. Let's check this out. I think, have we listened to anything from Spyro 2 yet? I think we've listened to stuff from like Spyro 1 and Spyro 3. I can't remember if we've listened to anything from 2. The cover art looks familiar. But yeah. Okay, this is a this is a Spyro song, so I'm gonna guess we're gonna hear some Dorian and Mixolydian stuff. Um and uh weird samples and groovy bass lines. That's what I'm gonna predict, alright? So I'm gonna see how right I am. I'm gonna listen once all the way through and then listen back through again for analysis. Let's go. Okay, so we got some like mechanical percussion samples. MIDI guitar samples in weird intervals. Organ. Doing weird like dissonant kind of chord stabs. Roll. MIDI electric guitar now. That sounds so much like the garage band like MIDI guitar. So it built up to something real big, and now it's back to the... I think that's where it loops, so it's got to, like, start the build over again. Yeah, this whole track is essentially just building layers. Is that organ again? Yeah, so, like, the drums come in with a full beat, and we get some other, like... There's not a whole lot of melody happening, it's just sort of groove, right?
And yeah, as far as like water level theme goes, this just kind of sounds like a Spyro song. This could be anywhere. It's jamming, you know, like the, the guitars almost sound fiery, right? I love that little, that little sample. I feel like Metroid Prime Hunters also had a song with that. It's, it's, it's triggering weird nostalgia in my brain. That weird noise blast. Okay, then it fades. All right, so this is a groove, right? There's not a whole lot of melody happening, um, but there's some, there's some funky chord stuff. Let's figure out. That's a very Metroid sound. Oh yeah, totally. Specifically, anybody here had Metroid Prime Hunters for the DS? It was like a DS multiplayer shooter. <laughs> and I just specifically remember hearing that sound through like the lo-fi DS quality. I played it a little. I played that game a lot when I was like, oh God, I must have been like 10, 12. So we got these chopped kind of like mechanical samples. Welcome, Ren on Air. I gotta say I'm pretty on air myself, you know? Sick hat? Yeah. It's uh, very appropriate. It's the uh, it's the water level day, so I I usually have a dono bar up top so people can uh, get me to put on a new dumb hat and uh, <laughs> Queen Snarf in the chat uh, met that shit right away so that I would put on the fish hat, which is appropriate. I I can't blame them. I'm on some air myself. This is not. This is literally just air. Okay, I'm done with that. No more prop. Okay. Snarf obliterated the dono bar. Oh, absolutely. It's gone now. It's not coming. It doesn't need to come back. I don't need it. Like, we got the fish hat, right? We're not doing any more today. We're good. So, okay, we're already in some weird scale, right? So this, hits us right away, it does this thing where this is a minor third, this is a major third, and it just sort of, wah! Thank you, Queen Snarf, for gifting a tier one sub to Ren on air, welcome. Ren, you now have a moon next to your name. As you can see, everybody in the chat has different moon phases. Stay long enough, it becomes a, becomes a full moon, becomes a new moon. You can now use the emotes. 850. That's crazy. That's more people than there are, than, than there have ever been in the chat. I don't understand. Okay. I never stopped having first. I, do you, it, what does that mean? What does first mean? I actually don't... Is that first commenter? Founder? 13 month subscriber? Yeah, you're special. Can I change, can I change the, the premiere subscriber thing too? I should be able to. All right, all right. Six sound effect as well. Yeah, I, I think that's a Blue Jay. All right. Does like a chromatic walk up there? Weird, like melodic motion, right? Okay, what does that organ do?
Ah, the organ is just doing that. Like those two chords from the beginning of that little plucky thing. It's just doing that back and forth for that little section. And then it's like... Is it doing that? Is it doing C and D? Whoa! Cast CC tiered 181 bits! I've been sending the VODs for these streams to my roommate who's been wanting to get more into technical uh, deconstructive theory side of music. She's only ever played piano by ear. And I hope these may help her figure out some things that she felt she's been missing. That's... That's, uh... That's cool. I, like, I'm... Definitely glad if this has like educational value to people because I just I'm just riffing right I'm just talking about things. I know about theory and how they would fit into things like this, but I appreciate that Thank you so much for the bits. It's 181. That's my arc number. You know, you know the secret That's totally just doing C and D. It's just stabbing a second. That's a very dissonant interval. <laughs> this track is very, uh, tense. We run down to that G, just slam into it. That guitar power chord. Move up. Then we go from C to D. And I think, I think D is actually what the, the scale we're in. It just decides to use both the ma minor and major third in the melody and the, and the melodic elements, which it just sounds so strange. It sounds so like off-putting. Okay, wait, that low voice in that organ is doing something. Ah. Yeah, that's what the organ is doing. So it's like, sort of... I guess that's it. Wait. So we have a D major, and then this F by playing like an A6, and then. And then like a. This is technically a D7. I, I, I guess it's a D7. This is a tritone. Right? You can hear this piano doing stabs on just the 7-1. Sounds like most of the other intervals that it's using are, are minor. Because that's a minor 7. Right? So now we... Jump to four for our B section, right? Where do, where do we go from there? So we're at... It sounds like we're doing... G into F. So, four... Into the minor three. Took four years of, uh, what is CM? But I still don't have the experience to really break down music the way you can. It's nice to hear you articulate. Well, thank you. 
I'm just, I'm, it's just chords and stuff. I just like talking about it. I'm glad you appreciate it. Okay, then. Ah, okay, so we have into F and then up to the seven, which is C. Then down to D. Okay, then. Certificate of Merit. It's like a thing for piano players. Oh, interesting. I, I took like two years of piano lessons. I never knew. I never knew about the rankings, the piano ranks, <laughs> the piano leaderboards. Also, was a major contributor to my performance anxiety. Oh, damn. So. So when we drop down back, this is essentially the loop point, right? Um, and we start doing that. That it, it just kind of, it, there's a very Spyro flavor to that. Um, and like, I do think it sounds more interesting when it does that with it. There's just, it, using the minor third and the major third in the same, like, like, right in a row like that in the same scale is, is just very strange. But it also sounds very Spyro. This is the one with the robot shark? Oh, fuck yeah! Love me some robots and also sharks. We get that like fucking Metroid noise for the rest of the track, right? So, yeah, um, this doesn't move around chords a whole lot. It and it is focusing on like the the grooviness of the chords, right? Rather than the scale, even in the notes that it's choosing, like with that kind of thing. Remember avoiding this section of this level with the robot shark? I love me some robot sharks, personally. And there's this little thing in the background of this part that you can hear the MIDI guitar going.
Just another like kind of spyro funky kind of. It's very quiet in there. Doing that. And that's really interesting because it's like, it, it'll like hit the, it'll slide into the one. Wait, why? Okay. It'll like slide into the one like that and then slide up to the seven. Right? So it, I, I think in general, this Spyro music, uh, God, what is the what is the name of the dude? Stuart Copeland likes to use the really funky, like bluesy kind of intervals, irrespective of like if they're major or minor, as long as they just kind of fill out a vibe. This isn't really like I think sort of maybe. Maybe we're in Mixolydian, but it just with like an extra note, right? So there's just like that flavor that is persistent. And all of this is very tense. Everything is, is, is serving the tenseness, right? And especially because it rocks between those two a lot, like through most of the song. There is literally just this organ part that's just... Those, that is a very tense interval. That is not usually, if you're gonna have these intervals in a chord or something, you usually spread them out over an octave, right? So you can like, you know, do that or something, or even that, or like that. Um, but uh, just having them right next to each other uh, usually doesn't fly in music unless you just wanna use that as a texture. And the, the way that it does that, it, it, it almost evokes a kind of, uh, like, tension. And apparently in this, in this level, the water is rising gradually. So that's, like, the threat, right? And uh, I think that it definitely is, uh, there's nothing to fear if you have your own robot shark submarine. Yeah, absolutely. You just got to get used to being around robot sharks. You have to live with them. Um, you, have to, you have to be among them and uh, learn their customs. Very MIDI, very samply, very PS1, very Stuart Copeland, very Spyro. Um, like, in general, as far as instruments and stuff like that go, this sounds like it is much more trying to evoke the feeling of the challenge of, like, the water rising, rather than trying to evoke the water itself, right? Like, this is sort of like a... This is the scenario of... of, of the, in which a water is... In, this is a scenario in which water is involved. Um, you're probably not, it's not like a, you know, Water Wonderland theme, like the Mario one we just listened to, right? Um, but it's cool. It's, it's, it's neat. It's got some neat stuff it's doing. And it's very, 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 very Spyro. Um, <laughs> like, I think, I think for this one, if I'm going to rate it, if I'm going to give this a rating, I think that's a three out of five. I would, I would give that a three. It's all right. It's not bad. Um, it's just uh, kind of. It's just very much a Spyro song. Um, I feel like I know what I'm, I was wrong about it being like Mixolydian or Dorian, uh, but it didn't even like do enough where it could have been playing those scales, right? Like it was just sort of. It was just sort of uh, just sort of rocking out, which you know, fine for Spyro. It's, it's a cool vibe, definitely. 
But yeah, that's Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage, the Aquaria Towers. Thank you, Cosmo Comic, for that suggestion. It's standard for Spyro music. Yeah, it just, I don't know, it just, in terms of uh, Spyro soundtrack stuff, very, very stock, you know? Very, uh, where's my, where's the C? Wow, really? Okay. Ah, oh, what a breath of fresh air. Okay, what's next? What do we got next? Title Tempest. Present. From Sonic CD. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, there have been a couple more suggestions. Dragonfish. Oh, back to back from Sonic Rush. Oh, we're going to do two Sonic ones today. We're going to do two Sonic ones today, guys. All right. Because I got I to gotta cover back to back from Sonic Rush. 100%. All right. But let's start with the Sonic CD one. Uh, well, not start. Let's continue. So, Jasaris in chat says, The water level of all time. Even if it is another Sonic CD track, it is too divine to resist. That's fine. I've been liking the Sonic CD track. So thank you for the suggestion. This is Tidal Tempest present. Both of the JP and European versions. Uh... I guess the, yeah, the version from the Japanese and European release. Sonic CD has different music in America, if you didn't know. But yeah, I'm going to listen through this once all the way through, and then once again for analysis. Let's go. Okay. Kind of ominous. Like, offset, offset like downward arpeggios, smooth bass, I love that bass line. That is a true sonic bass line right there, I gotta say. Slow wandering synth melody. I'm loving that drum groove too. There's like a swingy piano behind it all too, like just keeping up with the drum beat. Here's our B section. Ooh, okay. Nice chord change. Melody harmonizes. Yeah? Okay. This sounds very Sonic. And like the very, uh... Yeah, it's very like upbeat. Chill. Takes us back into that groove. This is very, um... A lot of Sonic CD stuff sounds way more like, like dance music-y. This one definitely, I feel like, roots itself a little more into, uh... I, I guess it is doing a lot of, like, you know, looped. It, it's doing a lot of, like, 90s club dance music kind of stuff, like the looped pianos and stuff like that. But it, it does sound more video gamey, right? I like how the chords keep changing as slow as they are. It doesn't like introduce like a bunch of extra chord runs and stuff. It just lets things draw out, right? Kind of adds to the floatiness.
I love the instruments in this. This is just, this is such a groove. This groove's so hard. I could listen to this, just like, just like on my own time, just groove to it. Yeah, and then we fade. All right. Okay, this is pretty simple. Um, a section sounds like it's rocking between two chords mostly. The B section has a little bit more going on, but it's very drawn out. So there's not a whole lot, because uh, every chord lasts for a while. Let's hear what's happening though. What key are we in? Okay, there's like some little string chords in the back. Is it that? Yeah, so we're getting like a... getting that kind of thing on the on the strings in the background I'm thinking we're also in D for this like D minor that just sounds like where like that sounds like the center when it mo moves like that yeah Oh no, I didn't want to do that. I don't give a fuck about this pizza. Oh, that's a sandwich. That's not a pizza. It's Panera. Hang on. Okay. I'm sorry. Got ad blasted for a second. All right. And then... Does anything water related count as a submission? Uh, throw it in the thread, type exclamation point VGM and then uh, find the thread that it brings you to in, that, in the Discord it takes you to, uh, which should be right there. And uh, just throw your suggestion in, we'll see. So we start on these arpeggiating. Blah, we start on this arpeggiating E minor, right? And then we move down to D minor. So this is like just a two one. right at the beginning here. It sounds like the root is moving up though. It sounds like it's moving up to three. But chord wise, that sounds kind of strange. Like that, and then. It says that that would be like a G7 sus, sus2. That, yeah, that's a 7-9 definitely. Ah, so this is hitting an A. That would make some sense. Ah, this is actually moving from... A to G. 
which would make these like an A minor 7 9 and then yeah that's a G minor 7 9 is what it goes for there yeah so We saw like the Sonic Mega Collection menu, right? And it also had those kind of like big, thick, implying like big 7 9 chords, right? This one also does the same thing. It's all, it, and it, it chooses like scale intervals, right? It chooses like a scale in which doing this motion, I, I'm pretty sure we're in D minor, um, we're doing this motion is very mystical, right? It's just that kind of shimmery sonic sound, right? It just rocks between those two chords until we get to the B section. Uh, and what is the melody here? It sounds like it's. I think it starts on that, right? Okay. All right, now we enter our B section. So that melody is really just... Like, sort of just running up and down. Intervals between the uh, one and five of, an, of, this, of this A here. Where do we go for the B section? Where's the root? Sounds like we go to three. Ah. We're on this F, and then we make it minor. Wait, that's cool, so the root doesn't change, but it still kind of goes down. We're on F. doing more of that. Then we move down to an E7. So we're down to two. You know what? I think we're in A. Maybe? Maybe we're in A? We might be in A. We might be in A minor. So I, I don't know, have we hit any black keys yet? Other than that one accidental? Because we were here. I think, yeah, I think we're actually, I'm wrong. So we're in A minor. So when it's doing this, Except, no, because there's also this accidental for the G minor. And that comes from... D 
minor, right? So I think scale-wise we are actually in D minor. So where, do, where have we wandered? And we go down to this A and make it major too. And then we go up a fourth or down a fifth to D. Ah, and then we jump down a fifth again to G. And that ends up stepping right back up into our A, our big A minor 7 9 chord. And our A section, our A section is basically just that. Our, our, like what the piano is doing, everything's kind of following it, right? It's spelling out chords and, and the other arpeggios are just sort of doing upper intervals of those chords. This one's got like a little... Just arpeggiating around and stuff. The bass line's doing this run. I think the bass goes a little crazier when it goes into the B section. No, it actually just does the same.
do you want to eat? So that bass line actually is doing fundamentally the same pattern on every one of the, the chords that it lands on. And it just, it just creates this solid groove and it never strays rhythmically from that groove or the arrangement of notes. Um, makes it sound really solid. Uh, everything, everything essentially sounds like it's transposed. Um, aside, like, like chord-wise and harmonic-wise, it sounds like it's almost like transposed chord to chord. Um, aside from that one part where it has the F, into the F minor, right? The ambient high end really makes this the water track to me with the high notes under it. Yeah. I think, uh, like, there is something, it's that upper arpeggio, right? Almost evokes. That is the sort of like floaty background thing in the distance kind of feeling that seems to come along with like water level tracks like this. Um, like, you know, again, it, it, it's almost like the, the one thing that I can think of that it is like reminiscent of is like distant submarine blipping, you know, like the, the kind of sound effects that we associate with something being far off in the distance in the water. Um, we also just associate it with being underwater in general in like a intense situation and and that um it it the arpeggiating on it especially arpeggiating on like thank you for the subscription sunlight metal that whole thing and also the fact that it's just doing this like like really smooth, but also floating between like a whole step kind of like chord progression. That adds to the floatiness and lets this upper arpeggio like have context. The fact that it's just doing basically two triads that fill in the extra notes of that chord, that's really cool to me because it could just be going That'd be. It could just be doing something like that, but they they make it so it's doing the spicy intervals of those chords, starting on the fifth, basically. It's very it's very chill, very floaty, very. Uh, and, and just because of the instrument sounds that they use, very like underwatery kind of distant, you know. Um, but I like this. I I think I think the bass groove, right? The the drum beat is killer. I love that piano part. It's just honestly, it's just really fun to play. That's just fun to play. Like, that's just cool. I'm gonna give this one a four. This is a four out of five for me. Wax and Gibbous for me. I really dig it. It's very simple. Um, and it does these like floaty dreamlike chords that I really like. It, it evokes, it has a lot of that sonic aesthetic. Um, but uh, it's also very, you know, appropriate for the theme, I would say. Uh, especially with the name like title Tempest, like the name like Tempest kind of has this uh, uh, like that that is the word that seems the most descriptive of like the sound that's going on here, right? Because it's it's a bit of like a clash between things. Um, what happened to my what happened to my keyboard? Did I just turn it off? What what did I do? What am I? Why is it doing that?
what's... Hang on, what? I didn't know that these were mapped. Where, where the fuck is that module? Hang on. I need to get rid of that modulation. It's going to drive me insane. I accidentally hit a button, which I do not know what it does. Where is that happening? That can't be in here, can it? Oh, it is. Why? Why? Filter? Tremolo. Okay. Alright. That's fixed. Why did it change... <laughs> Do all of these have a... Hang on. Were these auto-mapped to the... They're auto-mapped to the patches! I... I never knew this. These are MIDI controller buttons with no labels, so I never thought to press any of them. Oh. That's some bass. Oh, there's, there's an upright bass. God. There's a worse. P oh, it's like piano and string pad. Okay, I'm sorry. L let me let me do this. All right. So this was the. <laughs> so that was Tidal Tempest present from Sonic CD. Thank you, Jasaris, for that suggestion. All right. Sorry, I had to do the outro for the YouTube cut. Very cinematic. What's the end one? Ah, I see. Electric piano? Yeah, this is wild. All right, that's my first patch. That's my CP80. Wait, you make pop punk? What? Yeah. Yeah, I have a, if you go to High M Case on Spotify, that's High I'm Case. You can find all that. On Spotify, it's three words. Don't listen to Spoonie. It's three words everywhere. It's only that in uh, URLs. Okay, 
sorry. I now have discovered. I need to make sure that each of these patches is something that I can use, right? Because I'll totally start using them. I find it surprising that a person who likes pop punk has theory knowledge. Here's the secret. I hate pop punk. I don't listen to pop punk. I just make it. You're becoming the video game music person no longer known for smoke damage. There's... No. There's like... <laughs> literally... A hundred thousand times more people that have heard smoke damage than have watched any of the videos or are in this chat. So, anyway, let's continue. This is how I interact with my chat. I just naysay everything. I just contradict all things. Okay. I want to pull up, I want to pull up back to back. I want to pull up back to back. We're going to do two Sonic songs back to back and one of them is going to be called back to back, all right? That's what we're doing. Mru in the chat. Like MRU. I guess that's Mru. I, I don't know if that's a cat noise or a cow noise or what, but Mru in the chat suggested back to back from Sonic Rush. I love this song. I already know this song. Uh, I'm gonna have a lot of cool things to say about it. It's, uh, it's, a uh, oh god, who is the name of the composer? What is his name? I totally forgot the name. Naganuma? It's a Naganuma song, right? Yeah. Alright, we're gonna jam out to this, and then I'm gonna go back and talk about, uh, the theory. Back to back, and spin it on it back. So we got samples, we got some crunchy, like, clean guitar. Now we got chopped. I think those are guitars. Some haze. Now we got like big synths and stuff doubling those like guitar strum samples. Yeah, then there's this, this synth melody that I think it's just the same every time. And then they chop it up. I don't even have much to say. Like, this is mostly just sampled elements. And it's a very, like, 50s rock kind of chord progression that it's riffing on, right? It's just cool, it's crunchy. Yeah. So it's like playing with the layers that are that are happening at different times, right? Yeah. It's so crunchy. And it's pretty much the same chord progression all the way through, right? It just decides whether it's stabbing it or keeping it in the backbeat, right? Yeah, that, oh god, that ending. I feel like I've ended songs that way. Okay, um, uh, this song is very Jet Set Radio. Yeah, it's the same composer as Jet Set Radio. I, yeah, this is Naganuma. Hideki Nang 
Yeah, Hideki Naganuma has a very, very, very crunchy style, right? So that drum, that the the, dr the percussion in the background that doesn't sound like samples. That sounds like a flipped. I mean, it sounds sampled, but it sounds like a flipped like loop sample, right? It sounds like uh, because you can hear like background noise and stuff. That is more so a thing if you take something, if you lift something from material and then mess with it, like effect wise, than if you're just like, you know, have your own samples and you're you're putting them together. Usually, sample packs don't come with that much like background static. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting a lot of sample flips here. Getting some uh, guitars that are just like... It sounds like the, the guitars are like, maybe recorded for this, maybe lifted from somewhere and then sped up. They sound, they sound like they're, they're sped up, right? All right, then we get the chords. Oh yeah, okay. So it's from F, four, five, four, one, four, five, four. And it's just that. And I think it's that the whole way. And it's, uh, it sounds like it's power chords, too. I don't even know if it's full chords. No, I, I lied. There's totally upper intervals there. Definitely hearing that. Okay, there's like a couple weird intervals up top I need to figure out. I'm hearing that. There's something. Yeah, we we add like a six. Where's the F? It's there, right? Yeah. That says 5-7, but that's... Is that a 7? Because that's a 5. Oh, that would be a 7, yeah. Yeah, so it sneaks in a seventh there. Cool. Ah, and that seventh stays there when it moves up. So that, that makes me think that maybe those are like pitch shifted and it's the same chord, just like transposed. Yeah, and then sometimes instead of going down to four, 
it just stays and stabs on the five a couple times. <laughs> Sometimes it does it longer. And then what is that little guitar fill that keeps getting cut in? It, there's two. There's one that on, on the right side that's going... There's one on the right side that's going... Like in the background. And there's one on the left side that's going... It's something like that. It's doing like, it, it, like, it's doing something like that in one ear and doing something like in the other ear on the guitar. Yeah. Sometimes it does this little... It, it's just got like a lot of these little tiny chopped guitar fills that it uses to like fill spaces. I, I really like that. Oh, what does it do there? Ah, it restarts the pattern once. That's so funny. Like, it just doesn't, it just decides, like, I'm gonna throw an extra half a bar here. Yeah, and, okay, and then it takes it back away, so it does even out. It just shifts the whole rhythm of the thing for, like, a bar. And then it just does this thing where it runs up the... For like a section ending, right? Yeah, and that bass has this like... Where it like will skip back to the beginning of the pattern. It's a very like DJ kind of thing, but it's also used like compositionally in this. And like the way that it offsets things is like accounted for musically by the composition. It's not just throwing an extra beat in and rolling with it, you know? Like that. Never gonna believe this. The notes that it's playing in the melody are literally the same as the roots. It's just doing, it's just going up and down with those roots, root notes are, but faster. Yeah, and so it's uh, this is a, this is the one four five song of all time. I gotta say, 
If there is a song that that one four fives, this one four fives the hardest. But yeah, I love this song. Okay, I know this song. I uh, God, I'm pretty sure was it fucking uh like at Midwest Fur Fest, Goji had this in the middle of their set. Like, uh, I don't know if they bass boosted, like, did an extra mix or something, but they just started playing fucking back-to-back -back from Sonic Rush in the middle of, like, a, like a fucking EDM. L not like EDM. It was like a fucking... <laughs> it was a Goji set. Um, and, like, listen. When Goji's fucking plan... Ha oh, God, when, like, half of the motherfuckers at MF ever plan... Like, you try start, you start trying to fucking dance with that music, you're gonna get entrained to that, like, rhythm, right? And your heart's gonna be going at, like, 220 beats a minute. <laughs> like, following the fucking BPM of that shit. And this was, uh, this was no exception. This is very high energy when it's blasting through subwoofers, I gotta say. So, I got some fond memories with this song from several different periods of my life, right? I love the remix. Yeah. What year? Uh, this last year, right? No. Was it? Oh, fuck. I don't know. Because they played... I can't remember if it was this last year or the year before. I, I, I just remember it here. I just remember being in the fucking dance at MFF and Sonic Rush was blasting. But, yeah. Goji was there this year. Yeah, and they were there last year, too. That doesn't help me narrow it down. God. Okay. Um, so yeah, this I this song is super simple, but it's super high energy, and I love it. It's just a good vibe. Um, the thing about Sonic Rush is you can just straight up run on the water if you go fast enough. It was the first boost game, right? So like, um, everything in that is very high energy, and it's very like try to stay above water. You will be going through water. You will be like shot into water, like water cannons and shit. But. Uh, like, it definitely has the feeling of, like, you know, you're out on the beach for a good time and you're fucking cruising. You're cruising. You're gliding on that water. Like, keep up. You know, that kind of shit. I definitely get that vibe from this track. I am going to give this a 4 out of 5 also. This is a 4 out of 5 for me. Sonic Rush, back to back. I'm, it's, it's a high 4 out of 5. I like it. It's very simple, though. It's a very production-heavy song, more than it is, like, compositional, though. But I dig it. I like it. It's very intense, yeah. Thank you to Mru in the chat for suggesting Back to Back from Sonic Rush. Fucking love this song. All right. All right. I'm going to take a few-minute break. It's four right now. Uh, so I want to make sure I... Uh, you know, don't uh, sit down for like three hours straight. It's been two hours now, so I'll, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be back in a minute. I'm gonna put on some some backing music. You can have some enrichment while I'm gone. You know, uh, have this.
went to go turn my mic back on. I didn't have it on. I, didn't, I mean, I mean, I didn't have it attached to me. Okay, I'm back. I hope you've been enriched. I got another eye that could see through sound. Let's uh, turn that back on and also turn this on. Yep. All right, we're here. How was the break? It was great. I got... I already had my seltzer. Just slammed a protein shake. But, uh... I'm good. Did some stretching, you know? Oh. All right. Okay, so, 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 what do we got next? What's next up? God, there's like a few submissions from like a couple new people. There's a Pokemon one, the surf theme. Uh, let's do... There's the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. This is from... I don't know which one this is. I don't know which one this is from. Who suggested the Crash Bandicoot song? Oh, there's Spoonie. Spoonie suggested the Crash Bandicoot song. It's Crash 2, okay. All right, let's do that one. All right, so Spoonie in the chat suggested Hang 8 from Crash Bandicoot 2, specifically the, uh, the Insane Trilogy one. So, um... I probably don't remember this. Uh, <laughs> it's been a while since I it's been a while since I played the Crash Bandicoot games. Actually, hang on. I don't want the screen in the background. I need my Twitch chat on screen twice. Okay, even if it's tiny, that can go back here. All right. So. All right, okay, all right. So this is Hang 8 from Crash 2. Um, I probably won't know it, but we're gonna listen through the whole thing. It's pretty short, it's a minute, 40 seconds. Whole thing through, once all the way through for vibes, and then again for analysis, let's go. All right, surf guitar right off the bat. It's definitely a surfing song. If the title wasn't obvious enough. Yeah, classic like surf slide down. Got some weird, like, synth brass with an organ behind it or something like that. Yeah, and it's doing, like, the surf drum pattern with the two snares. Doing that. There's a lot of like chromatic motion going on here, right? Ooh, weird interval that ended on there. Yeah. These are just some cool surf rock chords, basically. It's very much in the uh, 50s, 60s surf rock vibe, right? That guitar slide, that's so very... It's doing all the surf cliches, right? Yeah, and then it just ends. And then it just ends, not even a fade out. All right, so, feels like you're running. Yeah, I, it definitely feels like, like, I imagine this is a surfing level, uh, it, it, this has to be a surfing level. So you're probably up against a clock or up against some kind of time limit, right? You couldn't find one with a fade out? It doesn't matter. We got to the end. We're 
We're on F sharp. What kind of F sharp? What, what, what sort of F sharp shape are we doing? We got like a whammy bar kind of thing going on here, I can hear. I hear a little bit of that happening. Ah. So we start in F sharp minor, and then we move, uh, it moves up, right? Where does it move to? To the three. A little bit of tremolo kind of shit. Yeah, it's probably like, it's got like a chorus or some kind of like whying effect going on, because it's not really doing like a lot of the like really big like surf guitar whammy stuff, but it's just got a little... Yeah. Used for a lot of levels, but the one ones they are primarily used for, you are riding a little motorboat thing. Oh, okay, so it's not actually surfing. It's just got all that, that surf aesthetic. So we're doing a 1-3 right now. I can't play this chord apparently. Okay, it's these two and then A, okay. Yeah, we just hold those out. And there's this weird... What are those notes? I think it's like a... These are... That's like a... It says F sharp minor. I think that's a six. Yeah, and then it, it does these like sixths. Ah. Wow. Then we get a little bit of that. Wobble. And then, yeah, that's just on a You just take a guitar, and then you just slide your finger down the frets while doing like a... That's, that's just like a surf rock cliche. Okay, and then this comes out of left field. Yeah. And that sounds like it's in F sharp major now, right? That just as that little thing comes in. Yeah, so we have this, this like walk down from the five chromatically down to the four, down to three, and then one. Which is sort of crash, that's, that's sort of like a Crash Bandicoot thing, right? Okay, so we have this, like, wh what is it doing? Yeah, the first time it does this...
Yeah, yeah, so that one starts doing like a walking kind of like lower line. And then it goes from there to one. Or I'm sorry, it goes from one to four to three. And then goes up to the five and does that walk back down. Yeah, and then it does this. So it goes up to the five, then down to the three, and then down to one. So it like, just it's tracing that F sharp minor root wise. Like that, like so. And we drone on F sharp. Okay. Yeah, and there we do like a more stereotypical. We go to five, then go to four, and then go back down to one. Uh, another little surf rock cliche, right? On five and we're just staying there then we go to four to five no one okay now we're down in E we're down in like a seven right so we're in like an E minor We go down to C sharp minor and it just ends that way so this is the fifth right so if it would loop back around then it would land back to that F sharp minor right um, you know five ones and whatnot something ends in a five it wants to either go to six or one that's implied and since the song starts with a one you know that the reason that they went there is to resolve when it loops, right? So, yeah, this, like the other one, uh, is doing a, a very stereotypical kind of chord motion, but this one is rooting itself more in like surf rock, right? It's using some of the cliches of old fashioned surf rock, whereas the other one was just sort of doing a poppy kind of progression, like a poppy chord progression. This is definitely trying to be surf rock. Where does it say there's an A? Okay. The remastered did, did, ah, the remastered really did good work, yeah. The original is quality, no matter what, all it sounded, ah. I can't read for some reason right now. The original is quality, no matter what sounded way too compressed. Okay, yeah, so this is like the remake, this is the, this is the, the reinterpretation of the original song, I would assume. Um, but, it's a surf rock song. It's, they're, 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 they set out to do a surf rock song, and they did it. Um, and it's, it's, it's just, it's pretty simple as far as that goes. Uh, is there anything about like a melody I missed? Yeah, there's like these, those like little upper things, those are just following the roots, right?
No. Yeah. And the way that it's just doing those stabs, it's mostly just trying to emphasize. It's just trying to emphasize the roots and stuff. That's what most of that melody is doing. Throw in a little bit more chromaticism and stuff. Yeah, and that little melody there. The way that it goes through those notes kind of implies the rest of the chord motion. That it, the song ends with. So that's cool. It's, uh, it's, it's very tightly composed, right? Um, always sounded like if Devo did a surf rock song. I could hear it. I could, it, it, yeah, I, I can kind of hear that. Um, but I dig this. It's a, it's a, it's a little, it's a little goofy, but it's, uh, you know, it's a surf rock song. This is just a surf rock song. It's, it's funny because like, uh, I think it was one of the last, not last week, whenever the fuck I was streaming last, um, there was this one song, it was for Genesis, and it genuinely just sounded like um, a grunge song arranged with Sega Genesis sounds. Like, it just sounded like a guitar, bass, and drums, right? Um, and that was, and I, I commented, like, that's so impressive that they just went for, like, let's just do grunge chords and shit. Um, and let's just make it sound like a fucking like Nirvana song or something or like a like a you know 90s alt rock song or whatever and they accomplished that with uh with just Genesis the Sega Genesis sound chip this is one of those things where it's like you were just trying to do a surf rock song and throw some goofy synths over it um but they can do th these are real guitars this is all a full arrangement they just went and recorded a surf rock song and threw some extra sy synths over it and had some organ you know have it the organ is is pretty stereotypical of the time but you know those little goofy synths and stuff very video gamey right synths real goofy in this one indeed yeah like if that synth wasn't there or if it was like a, another instrument or like a lead guitar or something um this would just be a surf rock song right like this wouldn't this w like it wouldn't matter this is from crash bandicoot this would this would just be like oh this is a surf rock song it's got all the elements of it but I dig it. I, I think, uh, though I'm not like impressed impressed, I, I, I do think it's a good vibe, but I'm going to give this a three. This is a three out of five. Three out of five, half moon for me. All right. I need to actually have a button that has like, like I should set what the rank is going to be like on my, on my, on my stream deck. And then I should just like hit a big button and it should come up. I gotta, I gotta figure that out. I gotta figure out how to do that. God. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a, that's a three out of five for me. Hang eight from Crash Bandicoot Two, the remastered mix. Thank you, Spoonie, for suggesting that. That was cool. That's a cool idea. Yeah, I need to build up my my stream a bit more. Uh, I had the song on a character inspiration playlist forever. <laughs> very, very surf character, I imagine. All right. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Okay. What else do we got? It's 4.30. How much more time do we have? See, there's Rocket Knight Adventures. There's a Pokemon one. Mega Man 4. Dive Man. Um, Dragonfish. Let's see. Um, I, uh, I want to do one of the Zelda ones. This is, oh man, it's a fucking extended mix. I won't stand for this. Hang on. Breath of the Wild. I can't, I can't do extended mixes. This one's nine minutes. That can't be true. There's no way. Oh, this one's two minutes. This one says it's from the official soundtrack.
If the timeline's 30 minutes long, I just can't, I can't skip around, right? Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me just make sure this is the same song. That's a fucking ad that's not the song. Give me the song. I need to see it. Okay. Okay, yeah, we found the, we found the original. All right. This one's two minutes. Right, this was suggested by Queen Snarf in the chat. It is the Varuta battle from Zelda Breath of the Wild official soundtrack. It's pretty short, actually. Um, and uh, Zelda boss battles are usually pretty interesting. Was it, somebody sent, was it Mulgara? Uh, that somebody sent, like, a while ago? That one was fun. All right. All right. Assume the character lives in California and does mushrooms and heavily implies he doesn't smoke weed. God. I don't know. I guess, I guess surf rock is a very shroomy kind of aesthetic, right? You can't be high when you're surfing. You gotta be coordinated, right? But I feel like surfer dudes definitely have the kind of be dipping into the shroom territory, right? All right. All right. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, what is happening? All right, okay, let's go into it. Varuta battle, okay. Let me, let me just do the intro again. I'm, I'm lost, okay? So Queen Snarf in the chat suggested the Varuta battle from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild official soundtrack. I have been a bit more impressed by the Zelda boss battles than other boss music that has been submitted, so I'm excited about this. Let's listen through... Let's listen through once through for vibes and then again for analysis. Let's go. Okay, big string glissando up. Ah, that chord progression is familiar. There's another Zelda song that uses that. And now it's changed. You have like bells and I think a flute being doubled? Maybe a reed instrument? Very, very imposing piano. The percussion is more like a, like a marching kind of thing, rather than being like a big bombastic, like in your face percussion. I think that's a clarinet. It's a very floaty melody. Okay. Yeah, there's that glissando again from the intro. Yeah. Now there's a piano doubling that melody, and also brass. Vocals harmonizing with it. Yeah. Little like staccato like accents on the... All right. All right. That pretty short and sweet. There's not a whole lot to that one, uh, but it's got some cool little, cool little chord progressions in there. What's it doing? Okay, I'm gonna guess we're in E. Because the glissando ends in an E at, at the top, right? A. Okay. So, where are we, where are we going? Okay, so this is one of those chord progressions where the fifth up top is gonna move and then change the chord, right? So we go from just an E to having a C because of the six taking over the root function. 
And then we step up another half step. And that essentially makes this an E minor six, you could say. Or an A. And then go, goes back to C, so. We're doing something like that. Uh, this is a this is a thing. What the hell is the other song that uses that? There's another Zelda song that uses that, and I only know it from uh, Smash Brothers. Fuck. I, I, I do like that chord motion because you're just pedaling the bottom and, and letting the top notes like recontextualize it. All right, so. So then we move after we do one, one of these. We move down to D. So we step down to what I believe, I believe this is a minor seventh where we're at. Does it step down chromatically? Yeah. Okay, okay, so, hang on. What is happening here? Ah, we end on an F. And then go to a B. So this does something interesting where the top part, it moves, uh, I mean, in the first part, it moves this top note, this top, like, fifth, creates different chords that way. And when it moves down to the D, it moves the root down a half step. So that goes to that, and then actually goes down to C. And it, is it going down to B there? What is it doing? Yeah, we, we, we do go down to B, but I guess to go back to an E and do an E major. That's what it sounds like it's playing.
And then it goes down to an A. And then down to an F, which is like a half step up from the E we started with. So it lets you do that kind of... Sort of, sort of God chordy the way it ends on that F like that. Half step down motion. And that's essentially all there is to this song. At the, at the beginning, it doesn't actually go through the... It does that as like an intro to the section, but it only... Steps up to the six and goes back, right? And the melody also starts by doing that same step. And we have that kind of thing going on. Yeah, okay. Where's the F? Okay. So this interval here, when it jumps to that and goes to the C, this is just like the upper major interval of that C, right? Okay, wait, what? Yeah, so then we're in... And the melody is also on a B. Yeah. That says it's a B7, there's no way. Yeah, that's just a B, okay. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So I think what we're actually doing, sort of? If I can play the chords... We're sort of a doing an Andalusian cadence, but with an extra step, this extra step. If 
If we didn't have that there, it would be... Which would be an Andalusian cadence, right? But we add this into there, into the descent, so that the, the descent chromatically goes from D to D flat to C to B. And when it moves from this to F, that's like a tritone motion, I, th I believe, right? Because this needs that F sharp. But I don't think it, wait, it doesn't actually move there, right? It goes to A. And then to F. And then goes back to E, right? Ah, and then it steps up to F sharp. Yeah, and then it does the two five one. Cool. Okay. So yeah, this has a really cool chord progression. The melody is a lot of long drawn out notes that are more so just serving the chord progression. Um, and it's it's very much just like a vibe that is being followed. Like the the vibe is in the chords and they are being followed. Uh, you know, like there's glissandos up and down. There's big brass accents and stuff. The, the melodies, these long, drawn-out notes that mostly hit the chord tones. Um, and it's just about this, this thick-ass chord progression. We do that, so we get like a sneaky like 1-6. Then we go down. Down one more half step, and then... C. Wow. C, and then down to the five of the chord that we started with. Right? And that's like most of what's happening here. There's a couple little places where there's more flair. It ends in like a, a quick little two five one resolution, which is two authentic cadences in a row, uh, more circle of fifths kind of stuff, you know. Um, I have a cool fact about this song. Give me, give me a, give me the fact about the Varuta battle. I want to know. I want to know the cool fact. I pretty much have said everything. It's very dark, but the extensions make it bright. Oh, definitely. And and especially just like the chords it moves to and it chooses to do it like, it, it, it's using a lot of major chords, right? Queen Snarf cheered 1,000, whoa, whoa. The main characters, uh, the main characters in this themes are named Mifa and Sedan. The song is meant to include solfege that spells out their names. Like me and Fa and C and T and Do. Oh, like Dori, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti. Is it C, Do or T, Do? Because I thought C was... C is uh, a sharp... Or no. Hang on. Okay, so how would this work? So we're in E, right? I gotta find where that is. Let me find out what, the, what, what you're talking about. Mi, Fa, and C, Don. Japanese soul fetches. There's no way. There's no way Japanese. Hang on. They use note names, right? They don't use soul fetch for. Okay. They don't have a movable dough, right? C is a raised five. Okay. Okay, so, so, okay. Here we go. So, like, if this is our one, right? A 
Also, thank you for the 10,050 bits. I, I almost forgot to thank you for that. That's a lot of bits. I appreciate that so much. Okay, so... So this would be me and Fa. Right? Queen Starfish gets it a tier one sub to Heaven's Date. Welcome. Welcome to the Moon Temple. You have a moon next to your name now. Oh, it's like Sidon. Okay, so, so me and Fa in terms of this scale would be, and then C and Do would be. Those. Me is E, Fa is F. That's movable Do though. Normal C major scale notes. We're in fucking E though. Okay. So it'd be E and F. Yeah. And then. So then. T, T is B, and then Do is that, right? But C would be that. Those are just the half steps. So what's weird about that, so we do have that, but in the melody, I, I didn't hear, so we're looking for E into F, and 7 into 1. Okay, so we do start with... So we do have that C and Do. If we're if we're going by if we're going by f fucking I'm sorry. Movable Do is what we have. Non-movable Do is what other countries have. Okay. So, we're in E. So we do have that in the melody and then Ah, and then it does that half step. So we, we do have that. So it starts with... So we have Mi Fa. Okay, that's neat. That's that's a pretty that's a pretty neat little thing to add into into that. I appreciate it. That's clever. Um, that's pretty cool. I uh, I don't I don't deal much with the like I always forget that solfege is a thing, um, and that you can sometimes use it to spell words. <laughs> uh, but that's cool. I think in general, I I do like the, the the motion that this song is going through, and how like when it moves to D, it almost like modulates to D, because it adds like a couple extra, like it the way that it follows the chord progressions, it adds a lot of flavor um, in every note in, in in every chord change, you know. And uh, I like that. I think I would also give this one a four. I think I, I've given so many fours today, but this one's four worthy. It's interesting. 
Um, but yeah. Yeah, this is another waxing gibbous. Four out of five. The Varuta. I like that one because there's, there's not a whole lot going on in it. But the chord motion that is there is like interesting in and of itself. And it it moves around a lot. Like it, it only has like a couple variations, but within those variations the movements are very cool. But yeah. I, I, I do like this. Water boss. So that's the Va Ruta battle from Zelda Breath of the Wild. Thank you, Queen Snar, for that suggestion. Uh I got time for one more. It's almost five, but I think I can I think I can swing one more. Let's see. Let me check the thread. All right. Uh I kind of want to do the Pokémon one, the surf theme. Did I have a submission idea unless you're full up already? Uh there's like there's like another one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's like another four that came up. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Heaven's Gate suggestion. Let's do the Pokemon one. That's probably gonna be the last one for today. Stop. Okay. <laughs> Before I start this though, what's our theme for tomorrow? What should I after I cut stream? I'm gonna make a new thread for suggestions. What should the theme be? So where did my hair go? It went from like being in my face to like hanging out like cool, looking cool to like being totally gone. Okay, there. Desert? Ooh, desert levels. That's a good idea. Battle music. I, no, battle music is boring, okay? I'm gonna get like a zillion like JRPG battles and they're all gonna sound the same. Okay. Themes for calm safe areas. Uh, I feel like we did some of those more recently. I feel like I would, I would want to do that one, but I would want to put more time into it. Because we did, like, the Resident Evil save music and, like, merchant music and, like, a couple other stuff like that. Character themes? Mmm. See, there's two issues with doing character themes. One of them is that, uh, a lot of them have lyrics, and they suck. Uh, character themes without lyrics, though, I think that would be fun. God. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm gonna be real. Like, I, I, there, there have been so many suggestions for, like, JRPG battle music since... since that's one of the reasons I started doing themes, because I want to stop getting suggested that shit. Uh, retro sci-fi, like, 80s stuff. Hmm... I mean, like, that's, I'm trying to think what, what games that would fall into, like, would fall into that. Hang on, I'm just adjusting a light over here. Okay. JRPG battle music is my whole stick. I'm so sorry. It's all the same. Like, I, I, I don't know. Literally any GameCube fighting game. Yeah, fucking... I don't know what category break the targets from uh, Super Smash Bros. <laughs> would fall into. Custom Robo. I think we've done one Custom Robo song. I do like Desert Level. I think that's a good theme. I think Desert... I think that's the winner. I think I'm gonna do Desert Level for this next one. All right. But we got one more. It's the surf theme from Pokemon Silver slash Gold slash Crystal. This was a Game Boy Advance game, right? Oh. Oh, okay. Desert themes get no appreciation. I love me some desert themes. Color? Oh, Game Boy Color. Okay. Yeah. I think I, I think I had the remake to this one. I think I had, like, Soul Silver. I think. I can't remember. But let's see. Yeah. This was suggested by Heaven's Gate in chat. 
It's the surf theme from Pokemon Silver, Golden Crystal. We're going to listen through the whole thing first, once through, for vibes, and then again for analysis. Let's go. Okay, this is not surf rock at all. This is very whimsical and floaty. There's only like a few voices. One's doing like a little rocky arpeggio thing, one's doing a melody, and then there's one doing a bass line. There's no percussion. It's doing a lot with them three or four voices though. I can kind of hear a counter melody in the background too. I like the chords in this. They're very like... It's almost carnival-y, you know? Is that a rickroll? Yeah. Ah, we're getting rickrolled. I hear I heard it. One of the melodies is like really like wandering around a lot and sometimes harmonizing with the other. And this isn't three, this isn't three four. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Interesting. Very interesting vibe on this one. For, for a surf theme, uh, very, very unlike the, the surf song from the Crash Bandicoot one we listened to. But it's definitely got its own thing going. Let's see. Let's check this out. Okay, it sounds like, just intrinsically, it, to me, it sounds like we started on the five of the, the root, right? So we're, we're in B-flat for this intro. And we kind of walk up. Okay, now my hair is in my face too much and it's getting itchy. Okay. Okay. I was wrong. This is a four of the chord. And then we go up to D sharp. Go down to seven. Then major six and minor six. Yeah, okay. So this... Oh wait, no, no, no. I'm wrong. I was right the first time. This is a five of the chord. Because it would go down that way. Duh. So... And it does that, right? Seven, major six, minor six. One, seven, major six, minor six, and then. Yeah, and then we go four. Five, and then chromatically walk up to that minor six. And then, I think, I think that's it, right? A 
Okay, no, no, no. That spits us right into the Rick Roll pattern, right? So we have. Wow. So that's four, five, three, six. And you know, that's just. You know, it's it's that. It's the Rick Roll chords. I don't hear any Rick Astley in this at all. It's the chords. It's the fucking Rick. Come on. All right. Haven't heard the song in a while. Those are the chords. It, it's become a meme. Japanese songs, Japanese video game songs, uh, use that chord progression all the fucking time. Uh, so much so it's like a meme. Like, if I hear it, I, I know, oh, we're getting Rickrolled. Like, that's, it's just, it's inevitable. It's like a coin flip. Whether it's, if there is a song from a Japanese game, it is a coin flip chance that somewhere in it, they do. Ah. It's a, they just, they love that. They love that so much. We go back. Yeah. Go back to our descending chord progression here. Yeah, and then we go back to that intro. Okay, what is the melody, right? Start on the wrong route. It's got this like run up and down the the thing. And there's also another voice doing like a It's it's also doing something like that. Oh, it's that. Yeah, so... Damn it. Yeah. Wow. I guess it's gonna do. Yeah.
Oh, and it goes up at the end. It does a little walk up at the end, I missed that, but... Yeah, and it does this, like, really quick... It does like a little, like, quick little, like, run up there that isn't even a full bar just to get back around to the beginning. And it does that kind of thing a couple times, right? Um, but that's mostly all of this song. It's got this one descending part. My hair's in my face, my hair's in my mouth now. Maybe I should just cut my hair. Just cut all my hair off, I don't need long hair anymore. I wear this hat. It doesn't seem like you can play this bad. I mean, I don't know, I'm having trouble parsing that sentence. But yeah, essentially, essentially this is like, Two simple parts, one with this simple descending, and then one with... One with the never gonna give you up chord progression. Wow. All right. Wrong. There we go. So, yeah. This one's nice. It's quaint. It's using it's doing a lot with like the little chip tuny stuff that it has. Uh, but most of the other stuff that's going on are basically, wow. Most of the other stuff that's going on that isn't just like the chords or root or the melody is uh just like it's just arpeggiating through the chords, essentially. Um, and it, it, this song really likes doing that. It really likes arpeggiating through the chords. If you think about it, it's intuitively simple what the song is doing, kind of like a waltz simulating the dancing of the waves. It's going up and down. Yeah, it, it is doing a lot of like arpeggiating and stuff. And even the, even like when it moves the melody, it's sort of... It's, it's waving up and down, like it is descending. But it does like a little trill when it does it. So it's, it's trying to keep moving, right? And it does have that sort of like wave crash and tumble thing, especially when we get to this part. Wow. Yeah, that, like, that's a very, like, it, it sounds like something tumbling, right? It sounds like waves tumbling. My, I can hear my headphones scratching against my microphone. I hate that. Okay, so, but, uh, so it's definitely evoking, like, this sort of tumbling waviness, but it's a lot more pleasant. It's not surfing like a, oh, yeah, dude, we're going surfing, like, surf rock kind of shit. It's surfing as, like, a... Uh, a nice, pleasant summer activity, you know? Like, the, it, it's, it's painting, like, the, the fun side of being out on the water, you know? Swimming with your Pokemon and whatnot. 
Um, so I like this. I do like this. It's, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm torn between a 3 and a 4. I feel like it could be doing more, but it's also a Game Boy Color theme. So I can't really, I can't really you know, give it that rubric. I think creatively, I think creatively doing what it can with the elements that it's doing, it's doing a pretty good job, right? And it's doing something original that isn't just trying to sound like surf rock, right? It has like a actual compositional like feel to it. I would give this a four. This is another four. It's like half the things I've done today. More than half the things I've done today, I've given fours. But this is a four out of five for me. I like this. I really do like this. It's very chill. It's, it's such a good vibe. It's so pleasant. Thank you for suggesting that. Thank you, Heaven's Gate, for suggesting the surf theme from Pokemon Silver, Gold, and Crystal. I think that's the last thing we got uh, time for. Um, unless, unless... Um, unless, unless I still have time before food's done. Oh my god. Go to English. Okay. Okay. But yeah, next stream, uh, next stream, I'll make sure I'll submit a JRPG track. I won't do it. I genuinely, I get so to, if there's more... Then five submissions? There's a chance I won't do it. I get so bored. And I have to just sit and like smile and like, oh, that's interesting. It's gonna modulate a zillion times. Okay. Not super soon, maybe 30 minutes. Okay, I have another half an hour. Okay, we can do another. We could keep going. We could just keep going. I'm gonna cover some more. There's a, a Mega Man one. I haven't done much Mega Man. It'll be so niche you wouldn't notice. That's even worse! <laughs> niche JRPGs. Those don't make YouTube clips, I'm sorry. That's, I need to hit my nothing error. All right, yes they do. I will say, okay, what was the fucking one? Really niche. It was really niche, but it blew me the fuck away because it had Conlang lyrics. What the fuck was the name of that? Like, R. Tonalico or something like that? That one, that was a niche Japanese game that had some, that was a banger. And that was one of the only lyrical songs that I've liked, too. It was, because it was all like a hymn. It was like a hymn in a Conlang. Which was like, 100%, it was like so up my alley, it was in my driveway. Like, that's... But other than that, uh, I... <laughs> the, the other JRPG songs have been kind of hit and miss. What was the game called? I believe R. Tonalico? Was that it? Video games, manga, and an OVA. Is there... Okay. Yeah, a constructed language known as the Hymnos language. And it's, it's totally... It totally sounds like it's based on, like, a combination of, like... Uh, like, biblical, like, Latin. Plus, like, other, like, PIE. Like, like Proto-Indo-European. Proto-Indo-European influences. Which is also, like... It's crazy. It seemed like someone, like, reached into my subconscious and created, like, a niche video game. Um... Artonalico. Yeah. That was the most that was the most impressed I've been with a with a lyrical track and with a JRPG track. I can't get enough of this maple pepper flavored air. This is so dumb. Fumes sponsor me. I will continue to do this on stream. Tommy R. Tell Stop. That's too much of a stretch. 
All right, I'm going to take another brief break because it's technically, you know, I took one at halftime. This is technically the end, but I'm going to do one more. So I'm going to give you another, like, couple minute break. I'll be right back. We ended on like a like a cool summer vibe, right? So I have an instrumental of another song I'm doing. Uh, it's gonna come out uh, sometime this month for patrons. It's an instrumental though. I've returned. I didn't even make this beat. camera back. Okay, cool. I never do C sharp major. Plans, but then you came. 
came up way off track but i can't say what i should be doing serotonin dopamine on a come up no pain to gain i guess i'm gonna waste away another summer with you with you Okay, okay, let's do one more. Let's do this Mega Man one. No, wait, wrong browser, hang on. Mega Man. Yeah, it's playing an Apex Legends ad. Okay. Song was lovely. Thank you. That's gonna... You can be a patron. For one dollar a month, you can get early releases of all my shit. It used to be, like, a week or two before I would put them out. But I've started going back to doing, like, full albums and releasing them that way, so... Sometimes you get songs, like, six months before I release them. That's case.dog slash join. Seasonal depression Forget it till it comes around Never even learn a lesson Birds calling out horizons Light got me thinking thoughts Nocturnal lives and hiding Obsessed with things gone wrong Meticulous Planning too ridiculous To get anywhere Missing this same old flame we're mixing with. I got to get back, but my time shoot. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, that song is addictive. That song, okay. I'm gonna be okay. Trivia, trivia before I start the next one. That fucking song. I was recording. There's another song that just came out on my Patreon yesterday. Uh, Bed of Nails. It's like a literally like a musical tribute to like the Metallica album and Justice for All. It's crazy. It's got like a zillion time signature changes in it. Um, super hard and fast riffs, guitar solo that's like a minute long. Um, and I and I was like I I I had like three days left to like finish this. And for some fucking reason, over the course of those three days, oh wait, my fish hat. Hang on, I'm losing my fish hat. I can't stand for this. At some point over the course of those three days, I just, like, pulled up this beat I made, like, a month ago, and I was like, wait, I have lyrics for this now. I named the thing Another Summer, and I had no lyrics yet. I was just, I'll figure out something. Uh, and then, like, the, the, I don't know where the line, like, I was just hit with a shower thought or something. I was hit with the line, I had plans, but then you came up. And I was like, oh, ooh. How do I make that? How do I fit that into this beat? And then the next three days, I was literally just down here singing that fucking song over and over again until I had, like, all the lyrics I needed. Um, and not working on the fucking uh, song that I was supposed to be doing. And literally, the lyrics are about not fucking working on the song I'm supposed to be working on. But, uh, yeah, there's that. There's all that backstory. My dad will love Bed of Nails. Yeah, I... I, I hope... I hope... Uh, all you fucking deep case fans will show your metalhead friends stellar side once the full album releases. That's a fun one. The whole album is very fun. It's streamed. It's. It, it says I'm still gone. It says I'm still live. No. Okay. All right. All right. Real quick. Real quick. Uh, that was okay. Yeah, we got time. All right, so this this was suggested by Eros in the chat. It is Dive Man from Mega Man 4 Voyage. Let's check this out. Last water level track that we're doing for today. It's like two minutes long. That's pretty short. We're going to listen through once through for vibes and then again and give analysis. Let's go. That sounds like a motif right there. It 
just like this low percussion that's kind of giving the effect of like underwaterness. Oh no. Ah, it's a Rickroll. And we got this like kind of like syncopated like melody going on. Now it's simpler. A lot of arpeggios in the background and stuff. Very epic chords, right? I do like that. There's like a half step up into, I think four maybe, that it's doing. Picks it up for the B section. Yeah. Yeah. And it does this rise. And it keeps doing the Rickroll roots. Duh, duh. Big triumphant finished resolution. It goes back to halftime. All right, and then it starts to fade. Okay, this one's cool. It's short and sweet. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right, so. So we start on F sharp and uh, we hit a seven in the melody, which is weird. I think we're, are we doing it like a six, seven, one here? What's happening? So, we're doing like a 6-1 basically. I'm gonna consider B-flat our one here. Ah, I see what's happening. So we're doing like a 5-6. Right? I love your hat. Thank you. It's a fish. It's smashed between my headphones right now. Hang on. Let me just, let me just, let me just. I don't need that extra hat. Okay. My hair is going to go everywhere. I don't care. It's, it's being too cumbersome. It's a whole fish. Yeah. 100%. It's a fish hat day. Uh, Queen Snarf obliterated the fucking new hat bar. And I was like, you know what? We'll do the fish because it's underwater day, right? Hang on, give me, give me my strand of highlighted hair. Okay, there we go. We're aesthetic now, all right? Okay. New hat bar. Yeah, uh, usually on the top of the stream, there's a dono bar that says new hat. And if it fills up, I put on a new hat. Hydrate. I'm almost out of seltzer. Okay, can't can't be doing that too much more. This is the last song though, fortunately. Okay, so I want to figure that out real quick.
know, something like that, right? And it starts just like rocking between like these two intervals. So what I notice is that it starts on it starts and ends on this note. Well, it doesn't start on it. It does like a it does that. But when it, we hit this note, this is a seventh of this F sharp down here that there's an F. But the, when we hit it, it's actually a five of the root that we go to. And then this is also, I believe, a uh, this is a minor seven of this root. And then we go back to that and actually do hit this as a seven, right? F. E flat. Okay. Okay. And then the melody sort of moves up. And then we get into the B section. And I believe it's doing... I believe it's doing that. And then it steps up six seven one. It actually doesn't do six seven one. It goes six seven and then back to six. So, it's doing something like that on like the upper, I think, the upper melody. Yeah, and then it arpeggiates. And then it does it. Well, more like a scale run. So we have that little scale rundown. And yes, and yes, these lower chords, I didn't mention it because I mentioned it through the playthrough. It's, it's those. Those are the chords. It's a Rick roll. It's just slower.
So we get that, right? And, and uh, Heaven's Day says, reminds me of the Pokemon song. Very, actually very similar construction to these two, I will say. Um, whereas the Pokemon song was more upbeat and happy, this one really likes to stay on this six, right? And, and just trying to, like, starting your progressions on the sixth, especially when you're in a minor key, and going up to one, um, it's, it's a very, it's a very sad sound, right? So we can get similar chord motions and similar melodic motions, but the tone of it will be totally different. And arrangement-wise, yes, they both go to the Rick Roll chord progression in the B section. Which, uh, you know, it's just a thing. They like doing that, not, you know, par for the course. And then we get this big triumphant ending where we have this six with a uh, major third above it. And then we go, go down to a fifth of the, the A flat, the seven that it moves to. And then hit the root. And instead of going up to one, we actually keep the tension going and go back down to six and restart the pattern that way. But yeah. Does like a does like a little scare run. Now what's interesting about this is because where this one starts on like a seven of this, the second time around it starts on a major third of it, right? Why does it say E? Yeah, so that's just an F-sharp chord without the 5, right? Where that would be like an F-sharp major 7. And it is also the root. Yeah. And then... I really do like that. There's just something about that little toggling. Yeah, I uh, th that's just cool to me. Um, this is neat. This is neat. It, it, okay. This uses a lot of very simple things to its advantage. Very simply constructed song. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of voices to use, obviously, so it, it has to be somewhat simplistic. Um, but they're doing like an interesting thing. They're not quite doing a 6 7 1, and that, that impresses me, right? They could just be doing that. They could just be doing that.
But instead of doing that, using that seven right, or instead of like doing that like that, they like will drone on this, and then instead of doing like the typical, they actually move up to one and use one to go to five, and then use that to come back to the six. And I think that's cool. And even though it does use the Even though it does use that chord progression, it does something cool over it, which I think helps it out. I definitely do like this one, and um, I will. I would say, I would say, you know what? This is Mega Man Four. This one also gets a four. This is another four out of five. Four out of five. Waxing Gibbous for Dive Man from Mega Man Four Voyage. That's my that's my verdict. I I dig this. It's very chill. Um, and it's 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 chill in like a like a weird floaty way, right? It's not like chill like happy. It's there is just something inherently like God, I okay. There's just something inherently vibey about I don't know, I don't know what it, maybe it's because this reminds me of like a Peter Gabriel song or something. Right? Um, so that's, that's what I'm hearing. Uh, I'm hearing like, it, it's, it's all, it's very upbeat, it's very intense, so it's not, it's not like a chill vibe, right? It's got a lot of intense stuff happening, but just that chord progression is so, uh, it's so vibey. It's just got, it's just so floaty. Like that. Yeah. Um, the intervals that the melody uses are cool. Um, and the, the like, it, it's got that classic like SNES like you, if you only have one voice at once and you want to like do something complicated Just run up and down a scale run up and down an arpeggio make something sound cool with Just like you know relatively musical little musical uh, content, you know, um, I like that. I Like this This is cool. Th this is a uh, dive man from Mega Man 4 voyage. Thank you to Eros for suggesting that That's a good way to finish this off Good little dive here all right, that's all I got time for. It's almost six. Uh, I'm gonna start the other thread. I'm gonna start the thread right now. All right, create thread. Uh, new thread, wed, five, three. Theme, desert level. Let's get, uh, Let's get dry, folks. Let's get low-key racist to Middle Eastern people. Okay, no. Let's get... Let's get heated. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, threads up. Anybody who wants to suggest things for the next day? Um, oh my god. Listen. I know what these songs sound like, okay? Ah, finished my seltzer. We're done. We're done for the day. It's sign out time. Thanks everybody for showing up. We got 13 viewers. We're, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna raid somebody. Let me see. Uh, let's see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Who can I raid? Who can I raid? Who can I raid? Um... Uh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Where the fuck? Where's the... Oh, it's this. That's right. Okay. Who's live? Who's live? Who's live? Who are we raiding? Proxy? Proxy just went live, like, 15 minutes ago. Let's raid Proxy again. Is... 
Unless Redacted's also live. Let's see. Practice training. Yeah, let's do... Coin flip. Yeah, no, I'm going with my gut. Proxy. Proxy. Glitch cat. All right? We're going to raid them. We're going to... Okay, we're going to have more viewers than they have viewers, all right? Send them one more emote, all right? And it's their birthday? Wait, no, say happy birthday. Yeah. We're raiding. Hop in. That's four. There's uh, seven, nine. Hell yeah. Okay, we got more viewers than they do. We're gonna over. We're gonna double their viewer count. Let's go. Let's go. 